Now that we've uh, completed the planking exercise, it's time to look at putting the tree nails on. I had a wonderful tool made by Vandalay um, that made hundreds of, of tree nails in the past. And uh, I took it out and found that the bits had become dull, wrote Vandalay to see if I could order a new set and uh, I also wanted new sharpening stones because I couldn't find the sharpening stone anywhere. And to my disappointment, I found that Vandalay had in fact discontinued making um, this wonderful tree nail maker. So we're back to making tree nails using a draw plate and I'm gonna take you through that. But before I want to just show you the Vandalay um, tree nail maker. So let's just take you through it. Um, the Dremel fits in this stand that I had gotten years ago. Um, the Vandalay tool has a little shaft that screws into, into the standard Dremel fitting, which is, again, absolutely fantastic using parts that we already have in the hobby. And then we have a series of little bits. In this case, there are three different heads. This one is inch and three quarter, 0 0.05. And again, it gives me an idea. I keep a trini nail in there, which let me know what it is. And then all you do is slip the cutting head in, tighten it up with an Allen key. And this is a, a guide um, and also protects your hand against being cut by the blade. Um, in it goes to the tool, to the tool holder, and you're in business. And then what you would do is you have some prepared dowel um, woods and you would simply push them in and it would cut the, it would cut the tree nail and go right down inside. And perhaps that was the only limitation is that it could only go in about two and a half inches to two and a half inches um, because it would hit the the back and and um, so you'd have a series of um, of tree nails you put one side in and then you put the other side in. The only problem I had with the tool is that. Um, it would sometimes jam inside the head and um, it was you had to take everything out and sometimes it was difficult to clean it and of course sharpening the tool became a, a major challenge and then I have no idea where the sharpening stones have gone so maybe some entrepreneur who makes modeling tools Mr. Burns might take a look at this tree nail maker and see if we can't come up with a newer, better version than the one that Vandalay had, had built. In my never-ending search, um, of finding new ways to do things or better ways to do things. I was just doing a search on the Nautical Research Guild forum and I came across a gentleman called Vadok and he suggested using um, hypodermic needles um, to make um, these wonderful tree nails. So I've gone down to a friend of mine, Hato Pedak, a vet, and he gave me what he has, and he says they are larger sizes. So we're going to start and do a quick experiment with these, these two. So we put the needle in. This is a yellow one. And we're going to cut it off with a Dremel. So that was pretty simple. And now we'll put it in the camera and drill press and see how it works. I put a piece of softwood in here. This is mahogany. Grain is up and down. So we'll try and get this 
in here. Tighten up. Okay, let's see what happens. That didn't work so well. The, the, um, the needles are just much too small or maybe the grain of the wood is too big. Um, so I went um, back to Hato and he was able to get some uh, much larger ones. These are 0 0.048, so around two inch, a two inch dowel. I had to cut the angle of the needle off and put an even um, a sharp surface on the edge of the needle, which I've done. Now we're going to put it back in the camera and drill press and see how we get along with that one. Here they are. Um, and it went fairly easily. And these are 0.43. So again, just as I said, about two inches. The other little lesson that I learned is that I only got three out of it. And the reason for that was that the first three I did very, very slow using the variable foot switch. Um, and then I speeded it up and the second three, um, it just, they just disintegrated. So clearly you have to keep the speed well below a thousand RPM. So there you have it. It's a system. It works. Um, I will try and get some smaller needles because um, that clearly is too big for this model. And um, who knows if, if it works well, if it's productive, um, it'd be great. But we're now going to go back to the more traditional way of making tree nails and that is using draw plates. The first thing you need to do um, when you're going to use a draw plate is obviously to make up some stock. And I live in the Caribbean. The recommendation that's made in the book says that bamboo makes the best tree nails, so the tropics. Um, so I got lots of bamboo, all different types, big, small. <laughs> and I have to tell you, they're a bit of a disaster. This was the best I could do with um, bamboo, bamboo tree nails. Um, not very happy with them. Um, I really just prefer to use hardwood. And the best way to make the stock is to get some um, absolutely straight grain, um, preferably quarter sawn wood, and make your pieces out of that. And that's what I've done. And I'm using, I'm using the same um, wood juniper. Um, to make the tree nails so that you see the tree nails, but the tree nail will actually match the wood grain that's there. Some of you may want to use a different color which would accentuate it. These, for instance, are Purple Heart. Um, it becomes so dark and so noticeable that I decided to let my good judgment prevail, my woodworking judgment which says whenever you're doing um, a tree nail or you're putting a cap on a screw hole on a piece of furniture, you would actually take the same wood, line the grain up and match it. And I'm sure that's what the old woodworkers would have done. We're going to use two saws um, to do this. So the first thing is to make the stock. And we go over to the Jim Burns saw and I'll show you what I've done. And I'm so glad Kurt Van Damme did that um, video on safety um, because in the past I would have used very unsafe practices and now I am using the tool that he demonstrated to us, which is here. Um, I'm using it slightly different. Kurt would have used this end to line up the um, point against the saw. I found that um, because the pieces we're cutting are so thin that I needed, um, I needed some of the plastic going further along. So I would set the width of the stock based on whatever the thickness of the tree nail I was 
I was going to cut and make it slightly bigger, not too much, because we don't want to do too much work on the draw plate. And the closer we can get the stock to the end size, the less work we'll have to do. So this is set, and I put the, the blank stock, in this case, um, it's just a piece of very straight um, three inch wood. Um, the truth is I've used very long pieces once um, I have it, but I have lots of these small pieces that I can use up. Um, again, the grain is very straight up and down. There's no cross grain. So I know when I, I cut the, the dowel blank out, um, it's not going to break in the middle. It shouldn't break in the middle. I put the blank down on the saw and I push it right up against the guard that we have in place and I tighten both screws as I don't want any movement in it and you'll see that it's flush against here. Turn the, turn the saw on and run the blank. Then you get another piece, slacken the fence off, again push it back up against the, the saw and cut another one. And you can see they're falling down inside. To prevent this happening with the Jim Burns, um, you can just simply change out the draw plate. You simply take the old draw plate out, put a new plate in and crank the blade up and it'll cut a perfect line um, on the new draw plate. And just to show you, you can use a long piece. Here is a nice long piece. And we have a nice long blank. We've set up the, um, the pre -arc. It's wonderful having all these different little saws. To prevent the tree nails from falling down inside against the fence on the pre -arc, I have a simple solution. I just take a piece of scotch tape, stick it down really very tight. Oops. And you cut it off on the edges so the fence goes on properly. And I just put a starter and pull the saw up. There we go. And so that'll stop them going down inside. Sometimes I'll have to put two or three strips um, to make it thick enough or use a thicker piece. And then when you put the fence on, um, you're getting a nice clean surface. I've installed this feather board which keeps the piece tight against the fence. And you just turn it on and start Cutting in square. So here's our blank stock. The first one I bought was this. I, again, I can't remember where I bought these things. Um, and it really left a lot to be desired. It, it, um, it didn't have fine holes. Then I bought this fine one. I think I might have got this from Micromart. And then I came across Mr. Burns for the first time. And this is the first Jim Burns tool I bought. And um, 
All I can say is you can tell he's a modeler because it's beautifully made and it's the best of the drill plates. Um, not sure of the technology of what you need to have in a drill plate, but certainly Jim, as I've come to learn, makes fantastic tools. The draw plate has a front and a back. The front has the various sizes and the hole is recessed. The back, which is where you put the blank through, um, it's this sharp end of the hole and you will pull it through um, the flat side, not the recessed side. So the process is really simple. I would come to this larger plate and just take the stock down and just go through each one starting from the biggest to the smallest. I know most of you have done this. And then this is a very useful <coughs> um, flat nose tool that I bought. This one came from um, Model Expo again many many years ago and when you're pulling stuff through these draw plates um, it can it can get really quite tiring. There are those who say you really should put the draw plate in a vise um, to pull a piece through. Um, I prefer not to do that but it's your call. I just find it easier. Um, in fact, most of the time I'm going to be in front of the television looking at a show or listening to some music while I go through this exercise because it really can be extremely boring and time consuming. So your preference. And if you do it right, you'll soon have lots of tree nails. So these are all the correct diameter. And I will continue doing this till I get bored of it. Um, you know, when we have discussions about stock, you can never have enough stock. And this exercise is so much preparation for it. You really want to um, over excel and produce much more than you need and you'll end up with extra which you'll always find a, a use for certainly when it comes to tree nails. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I'm sure all of you have done this exercise many times and um, we'll see you in my next video when I start laying out the tree nails on the bottom of the boat and then drilling them. So keep modeling. See you from Trinidad.